Yes, Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. You have been amazing. You've been awesome. Oh, hallelujah. 365 days of your mercy, of your grace, of your abundance. Thank you for your indescribable gift of kindness, of mercy, of provision. Here we are, the very last day of the year 2020. You have kept us. You have preserved us. Your grace has been more than sufficient. We've seen you on every aspect of our lives and experiences. Thank you, Lord. What a victorious experience we've had in this year. It, through the pandemic, through the lockdown, through the recession, through the challenges, through the upheavals, through the shakings, through everything that has happened. We are here today with our hands lifted, our voices lifted melodies in our heart appreciation so oh god to give to you for the too many things you have done we bless you jesus thank you for our families thank you for the things you did the ones we know of and the ones we know not of we bless you you have shown yourself to be dependable to be the god in whom we trust in whom we live and move and have our being you have been our sufficiency our ebenezer our stone of help our high tower our refuge our hiding place we love you jesus we love you 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 ya rabba baga sotalia kondele boshi irigroko so 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 pratikari baba baba thank you lord what a joy what a joy. We are grateful. We are grateful. We thank you for 2021. As we get ready to march into it on a glorious, victorious note. We thank you for your spirit that is present. For your hand that is strong upon us. For your purpose that we find expression. For your will that will be done. We come under the covering of your wings. That as you usher us in your mighty hands into a better 2021, your grace will be evident upon us. Your spirit will energize us. Your hand will be upon us. Your purpose will find full expression. We bless you, Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Speak to us tonight. We want to hear you. We want to feel you. We want to get your assurance. The word of direction. Thank you, thank you, thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Thank you for lives that you are changing tonight. Thank you for things that are not crossing into the new year with your people. Thank you for the victories. Thank you for the blessings. To you be all the praise. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. And amen. Welcome one more time, men and brethren, to the crossover 2020 into 2021 hasn't god been an amazing god to us we can't thank him enough for the goodness he has shown us the mercies he has shown us the favors he has shown us the preservation he has shown us we give him praise and we thank god for the the, the, the time of worship the, the amazing testimonies we've heard Today, we thank him for the choir ministration. God bless you, praise ambassadors. You are always a delight. Thank you for those of you who are tuning in today from every corner of the world where you are tuning in to be a part of this prophetic transition or crossover into 2021. The Lord has spoken. There is a sure word from the Lord for you today. So I'd like you to please pay very close attention because what God has for you is compelling. Is something you need to glide upon, to ride upon, to plan upon, to run with in the year 2021. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let me start by saying that we are thankful that despite the upheavals of this fading, dying year, you know, his word to us, that it will be a year of double portion, found full expression in the abundance of testimonies to us as a commission. We experience, I mean, let me put it this way, 2020. It, for word assembly has been our best year so far in church growth with respect to growing centers and growing church 2020 has been the best year so far with respect to god blessing us materially financially 2020 has seen incredible preservation miracles healings blessings diversity so the god we serve is not a man to lie everything is said he has brought to pass everything he's going to say to us he will bring it to pass so I'd like you to get ready. I'd like you to position yourself 
Because this prophetic word is going to be the basis for your engagement and operations in the coming season. Amen and amen. The first thing I'd like to bring to your notice and that very importantly is that in a few minutes we are entering into the first day of a new decade. Ten years, one of the most significant ten years upon the history of mankind. Please listen carefully. I speak to you tonight as God's servant, as God's mouthpiece. I'm not here to tell you what I want, what I think, or what was the discussion of a committee. This is the counsel of the Lord. The Lord said to me, the next decade that is beginning shortly is going to be the most significant decade in the annals of human history. There are going to be some incredible things happening that is going to shake the entire globe. And it's going to be happening on the two sides of the divide. For good and for evil. Both are going to be coming at rapid force at very intense dimensions. And that is why the word of the Lord is critical in such a time as this. So, as we get ready to enter into the new year, the Lord spoke to me from the book of Malachi chapter 3. Actually from verse 16 to 18. But to give you a context, I would like for us to read from verse 14. Malachi chapter 3, encapsulated within those few verses of scriptures, is what is going to reveal what God wants us to know. What he wants us to prepare for and prepare with. Not just for the coming year, but for the coming decade. So it's got to listen. Now, how clearly we understand it and how faithfully we adhere we make a significant difference to us. I know corporations, nations, and organizations are going to be coming with their projections and predictions and statements and expectations. That's okay. We've got no problem with that. But what I want you to know is that what I'm about to share with you is the word of the Lord. This is not just a logo or a graphic word, but this is a rema word from the spirit of the Lord. And that is from Malachi chapter 3. I'm reading this time from verse 14, and I'm reading from the New International Version of the Holy Bible. Listen, you have said it is futile to serve God. What do we gain by carrying out his requirements and going about like mourners before the Lord Almighty? But now we call the arrogant blessed. Certainly evil doers prosper. And even when they put God to the test, they get away with it. They get away with it. Then, those who fear the Lord talked with each other. And the Lord listened and heard. A scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored his name. On the day when I act, says the Almighty God, the Lord Almighty, they will be my treasured possession. I will spare them just as a father has compassion and spares his son who serves him. And you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked. You will again see the distinction between those who serve God and those who do not. The Lord told me that 2021 begins a new decade that has the same focal direction. Of course, there will be different you know, updates that the Lord will be giving to us year upon year. But essentially, this is the word of the Lord for us. 2021 is going to be our year of divine distinction. That is the word of the Lord. And I want you to listen to what the Lord is saying. Let me preface this message 
by reminding you that we live in times where evil is on the rise. Evil is becoming more trenchant. Evil is becoming more preponderant. Evil is enlarging on every side. That's the, that's the, that is in, in line with prophetic scripture. So on a global scale, there is not going to be truly a letting down on the barrage of evil and negative news. There's going to be, as a matter of fact, an increase in all the negatives you can think about from farming to war to pestilences, what we call diseases, whether pandemics or whatever it may be, is going to be on the rise. That's not even a prophetic word anymore. That's a scriptural reality that those of us who are in tune with the scriptures, the Bible talks about wars and rumors of wars. Say there shall be pestilences. If you go read the signs of the age and of the time preceding the coming of the Lord in Matthew chapter 24, it's all there. It's all, there's going to be a, an, an increase. You know why? As the age comes to a close, as the, as the timings of the world, and we don't know how close, we don't know how the specific time you know, uh, sequence, but we do know that we are getting closer by the day. By the day. There are many things that are going on. And the Lord said to me, son, the next decade is going to be very pivotal for my end time agenda. Just like Satan is also trying to accelerate his agenda in order, as it were, to kill, to steal, to destroy, and to ensure that he's able to capture more people to a Christless damnation of eternity in hell. So there's an intensification on both ends of purpose. There's an intensification on both ends of assignments, of trying to have the upper hand. But you know that only the counsel of the Lord is going to stand. And because it is in, in consonance, it's consistent with prophetic end time eschatological reality, evil is going to be widespread. It's going to be wide rife. It's going to be wide rife. However, here comes the glorious news. And I'm going to tell you sequentially what is going to be happening so that you can have an understanding, attune, and adjust your life to be ready to become a participator in that which God is doing in the now. Very important. The beauty of the times we are living in is that it takes the intensity of darkness for people to appreciate the brilliance of light. It takes the explosion of wickedness for people to appreciate benevolence, kindness, the nature of a Christian. It takes wickedness and evil exploding for the life of Christ that we carry to become more appreciated, more needed. You know, that scripture in Romans chapter 8 that says the whole of creation is in groaning and are waiting, open, reaching out for the manifestation of those of us who are children of light. It will become more focused. It will become more, more called for. It will become more appreciated in the days that we are living in. So there's going to be a clear distinction. So the Lord said to me, son, we are entering a time of divine distinction. It's going to be, the lines are no longer going to be blurred. They are no longer going to be gray areas. It's either black or white. It's either in or out. It's either for or engaged. There are no more demilitarized zone. You are either in the full battle or you are out of it. So men and brethren, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a coming season, 2021 to 2030, that God has said for me to tell you that there's going to be divine distinctions. The clarity of those between those who serve God, who do not serve him, the righteous and the wicked, is going to become more pronounced. It's going to be the days where you can't hide anymore. There's no more form. You're either in or out. Those on the Lord's side are going to become very, very evident. The days of pretense is over. The days of, of, of lukewarmness is over. The days of being unsure as to whose side you are on is over. Is the season of divine distinction. So the backdrop I like to present as I get into helping you understand these scriptures, these prophetic scriptures, is that in the global context, wickedness and evil is going to be on the rise. Now, all the upheavals you are seeing in nations, occasioned by 
you know, restiveness, protestations, disease, and all kinds of things is going to be on the increase. The intensification of the fights between the left and the right, you know, and all kinds of negatives are going to be on the rise. Another backdrop to what I'm about to share with you is the fact that we have not entered a decade, mark my word, we are Satanists. We are people who are anti-Christ are going to become more bold, more engaging, more visible, you know, more daring in their quest, in their claims, in their pursuits, in their agenda. The little veneer of, 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 of decency that they had used to cloak their oppression is going to be peeled off. There's going to be a total revelation of totally wicked operations of satanic agenda is going to come to the fore rapidly. It's going to come to the fore more distinctly. You know, the pretenses are going to be shown up and in the midst of it, people are yet going to be made to identify on whose side they belong to. That is part of what the Lord spoke to me about. So number one, wickedness, evil, diseases, recession, global issues are going to be on the rise. Number two, as a backdrop to the season that we are entering, that will help us appreciate the scriptures in Malachi chapter 3, 14 to 18, is that Satanism is going to be on the full rise. There's going to be people swearing allegiance, hiding no longer their, 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 their commitment to satanic rituals and rites and, and, and fellowships and, and whatever it is. That has to do with pure satanism. You know, the veneer over the antichrist oppression is going to be peeled off much more. And people are going to see, and guess what, surprisingly, to a number of us who have the privilege of understanding the implications, the eventual outcome of that, there are going to be still many people who are still going to take sides because we are now in the season. Listen, saints, we have entered the season of divine distinction. A distinction that is as clear as the noonday. Where hypocrites will be separated from those who are genuine. Who are genuine. People who take a true stand. Whose position is clear to all. That is the season that we are entering into right now. And number three as a backdrop. God is in a hurry. Permit me to use that expression. God is in a hurry to fulfill all things. The Bible talks about the days being shortened because of the elect. The Bible talks about we praying in order to escape a number of the things that are to come. I need you to know that because God is in a hurry, as it were, so to speak, to bring to pass his end time prophetic agenda upon mankind and humanity, what used to take many years is going to be fast tracked. God is going to be doing things on a double. We have not entered a season in God's calendar. Where all of the prophetic world as to what God is going to be doing in this time is going to find rapid expression. God is in a hurry to bring in the harvest. God is in a hurry to demonstrate the advantage of righteousness. God is in a place right now. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to the word of the Lord, men and brethren. God is in a hurry to show that righteousness pays. So against these three backdrops, these three backgrounds, I want you to understand why God is calling us into a season of divine distinction. It's very important you understand because if you don't understand this, your appreciation of these spiritual truths and reality will not be at the level at which it needs to operate. So please listen carefully. From verse 14, the prophet Malachi began to reveal what has been an abnormal order in the world that we live in. What is that order? You have heard it said, it is futile to serve God. And what do we gain by carrying out his requirements and going about like mourners before the Lord Almighty? We've lived in a world that has been unduly skewed against righteousness. We've lived in a world where it has been, where the slogan and sloganeering has been, if you can beat them, join them. We've lived in a world where more by act, you know, it's like, you know, the end justifies the means. We've lived in a world where people have chosen the narrow but tested road of righteousness, of integrity, have been mocked at. Where in the realm of politics, you can hardly survive with righteousness. I, I can't tell how many great good people 
have attempted to provide public service, but they just could not survive the mucky, dirty terrain of politics because people who thrive and survive there are people who know how to do whatever and everything that is required. Name it from the most absurd to the most ridiculous to the most wicked compromises. That's the world we live in. And that's the backdrop that Malachi was talking about. He said, you have said it is futile to serve God. You know, you can't be doing all of these things and expect to get ahead and make a living and survive. Thank God for the few pockets of expressions here and there all around the globe through which God has vindicated, you know, the tall order and, and the blessings of righteousness. But put together as a global dimension, we've lived in a world where, you know, the, 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 the current global system, is skewed against righteousness where the the, the, the social media that you know the airwaves and and name it all the major fronts are anti-god they make no pretenses about it the world has shown it in the choices you know that has been made all around the globe he said it's like it's futile to serve god you can't go with the highway of god and make a headway you can't go with a highway of God and make a headway. That is the posturing of the world that we are in right now. Whereby, you know, you've got to compromise. Whereby it's become okay to, to be a compromiser. You know, even though you, 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 you masquerade that or you, you catch that in a language or in a pattern or in a package that makes it appealing or acceptable. Not that devil is a liar. That's the word. That's what Malachi began with. He said, you have said it is futile to serve God. Where people say to you, like, if you want to survive here, drop that your God and all the things. That's been the order in business. That's what happens. The level of dirty games, the lack of empathy, the lack of humanity, the compromises. People wanting to ride roughshod on people. People just wanting to make gain at all costs, at whatever cost. It doesn't matter whose horse is God or whose feet is trampled upon. It doesn't matter how many people lose their lives so long as their bank accounts show that they are doing well. And they say to you, you can't bring God here. This has nothing to do with God. They are, the world has reached a point where everybody wants to shut God out. Where it is not acceptable in public places for you to uh, talk about God, whether his values or his principles. They just want to do without God. That's where we are, according to Malachi chapter 3, verse 14. And listen to me, child of God, God has forborne with this. God has tolerated this. But I tell you, he has just announced that no more. No more, no more, no more. No more, no more. And that is why the series of things that are going to be happening is going to be a demonstration of God's opposition. Of God's refusal to accept this. It's like we've reached the end of our theater. We've reached the end of the rope. We've reached the end. God is saying, no more. I can't forbear anymore. You know, just like happened, you know, in, in the old time. He said, I, my spirit will not always strive with my, I can't forbear this anymore. The insult, the assault, the denigration upon me for being the God that is patient, not willing that any man should perish, but that all should come in repentance is reach the limits and God is saying no more. From this moment, you remember, let me jump ahead. We'll get back there in, in, in that verse. He said, in those days when I act, on the day when I act, the Lord is saying for me to announce the days of his swift action is here. The days of his swift response is here. Listen, I speak as his servant. Watch what's going to be happening. There's going to be sudden judgments. Judgment for promotion and judgment for, for destruction. There's going to be suddenness. But I'll get that. Let me build up. So that's the backdrop of the world that we are in. A world that has rejected God. A world where the leading lights in most industries have no shame to tell you that they didn't come this far because God helped them. They came this far because of the practices and involvements and engagements and occultic practices and all kinds of things they've sub, you know, subscribed to, they, they, they've connected with. We live in a world that has thrown God out and God is saying enough is enough. This decade that is beginning in a few minutes it's a decade where God is going to tell every man enough is enough. We had warning signs with the pandemic. We have warning signs in the past. We have all kinds of warning signs God has been releasing. But watch what is about to happen. What is coming in these next 10 years. 
beginning from this year, we make the COVID-19 pandemic a child's play. Mark it down. Today is the 31st day of December 2020. I speak as a servant based upon the word of the Lord. What is coming upon the world? We make what has been happening a child's play. That is why it's not a season to stand aloof. It's not a season to stand at a kimbo. It's not a season to stand undecided. It's a season to be clear and definitive as to what your standing is. It's a season of divine distinction. The next verse tells you the reason of the verse we just spoke about. He said, but now we call the arrogant blessed. Blessed. Who are the captains of industry? Who are the leading lights in movies, entertainment? Who are they? Are they symbols of godliness? Of course not. Are they people who are moral crusaders? Of course not. Are they people whose lives can truly be held up there as living lights, as paragons or examples or exemplars of what societal norm and character should be. Of course not. So the Bible says. That we live in a world. Where the arrogant. The ungodly are called blessed. Blessed because of the influence they wield. Go on social media. And look at most of the people. Not all. Most of the people that are called social media influencers. What about their morality? What about their character? Zero. People who are arrogant. Even against God and righteousness. And the world calls them blessed. They are called social media influencers. They determine the direction of many thoughts. They sway public opinion. And in the midst of the arrogance and godlessness, the Bible says the world calls them blessed. That's the world we live in. And we call the arrogant blessed. Look at what the Bible says. It says, certainly, evil doers prosper. Evil doers prosper. Who are the leading lights in politics? Who are those that command the heights? The movers and the shakers. I don't need to tell you, you. You can tell this better than I do. You can tell this better than I do. So the scripture is accurate. Certainly evil do us prosper. And even when they put God to the test. They get away with it. They do stuff and they break free. Why lesser mortals. Unfortunate mortals. Are incarcerated. These guys. They jump bail. They buy justice. They pervert justice. They distort justice. They ride roughshod over national policies, over terrains. They get away with all kinds of things. That's what the Bible is saying. Take a look. Even when they put God to the test, they get away with it. How many people can you count to at different forums and forums and sectors and sections and, and institutions that you know these ones will be behind bars? These ones that are gallivanting the entire social, social sphere and, and political sphere and economic sphere and traditional sphere are people who should hide their head in shame. The Bible says they put God to the test and they get away with it. That has been the order. But listen to the word of the Lord. The Lord says for me to announce that no more. No more. The season of distinction is here. The season of swift intervention. The season of the sudden acts and intervention of God is here. Then those, here is where the distinction begins to come in. The Bible said, then those who feared the Lord talked with each other. And the Lord listened and heard. There's so much. Please flow with me. I know we're counting down to year 2021. I'm going to pause at some moment and usher us into 2021. But you need to listen and hear the word of the Lord. Then those who fear the Lord. It's interesting that in the midst of the compromise, in the midst of the deviations, perversions and pollutions, there are still a remnant of people. And I do hope and trust that you are one of them. People who still fear the Lord. People in whose heart they see a yearning, a panting, a longing for God and godliness and, and Godwardness and righteousness. The Bible said such people who feared the Lord. So I need you to know, don't accept the lie of the devil that everybody is a compromiser. That devil is a liar. In the midst of the arrogant, in the midst of those who test God and get away with it. In the midst of those who say it's futile to serve God. There is still a righteous tribe. 
There is a there is a there, there is a there is a remnant that are still standing ramrod righteous that are still standing untainted or oh, who have who have not allowed their souls to be bored. They are still a tribe of people, and I pray that you belong to that tribe of people upon whose behalf divine distinction is going to come with a clear message. The Bible says there are people in the midst of the perversions and deviations who feared the Lord. But listen, the Bible begins to talk to us how in this new season, how those people will preserve themselves. How they will elongate, how they will be able to sustain and be able to persist in the midst of their decision to be different from a perverted world. The Bible says, number one, they talked with each other. That talks about forming alliances with like-minded people. That also correspondingly talks about avoiding alliances with the wrong kinds of people. You know why it's so? Listen, there are many reasons, but one of the few that comes to my spirit right now is that in the midst of sudden judgment, you don't want to be caught on the wrong side. You don't want to be like a Jonathan who understood divine purpose with David but yet fought on the side of David or of Saul his father and died cheap. It's not just enough to know that this is righteous, this is unrighteous. Where you stand in this season will affect the judgment and justice of God that is coming swiftly. The Bible says, and those who fear the Lord talked to each other. That's talking about mutual encouragement. That talks about iron sharpening iron. That talks about like-minded people banding together, working together, connecting together, operating together. That's to say they are using that opportunity to sharpen one another, to challenge one another, to encourage one another, to motivate one another. That the only way those who fear the Lord in the midst of a world that is given to evil and compromise, the only way to survive is to recognize people who are like you, who believe what you believe, who ascribe to what you ascribe, who live by the same code and ethics by which you live. It's time to recognize them. It doesn't matter whether they are in church and, and you think and you know that these ones do not abide. They are just worshippers. They are participators. But they are not truly living a life. This is the time to make your distinction. Those who feared the Lord. Talked with each other. So this scripture also tells us that. It's not enough to be righteous in today's world. It's required to form affiliations and connections. Because the onslaught that is coming. Listen child of God. The onslaught in the feed of politics. In the field of, uh, of, of economy, in any field of endeavor, the onslaught, the, the, the concerted effort against evil and against righteousness by evil is going to be so strong that alone you can't stand. You don't want to go the way of people like Naboth, a righteous man who knew not how to sell his birthright but died cheap. Naboth died cheap. You know why? I've said about this all the time. Naboth stood alone. Jezebel had her husband, had the Lord of the Philistines, had the God of the Philistines aligned in an unholy conspiracy against Naboth. But Naboth was righteous. He stood alone. He fought alone and died cheap. The same thing with Elijah. Elijah stood alone, fought alone and died premature. Elijah died prematurely. He requested for God to take his life because he couldn't survive it. So God says in this season, in this new decade, in this new year, Please don't just be righteous. Seek for righteous alliances. Seek for people that speak to the righteousness in you. Speak to people that urge and encourage you. Speak with people. Connect with people. Fellowship with people. Hobnob with people who have the same kit and kin. Who believe the same values. Who subscribe to the same ethos. Who are people who are not just pretenders. About their love for God. And about their commitment to righteous standards. Look for them and associate. Don't just associate. Sharpen one another. Encourage one another. Challenge one another. Inspire one another. Support one another in the days that we are in. That's what you need to do in the coming year. Don't play with compromisers. Can I give a prophetic warning? Anybody you are, obviously we live in a world where you cannot but meet with people who do not subscribe. But I'm talking about in intimate relationship, fellowship, people you call your comrades, your friends, your partners. Please, I beg you, judgment is coming. I, I don't know from what sources, 
But that's what I hear the voice of the Lord. Judgment to promote the righteous. Judgment to put down the evil. These are the days where God is going to act. So please define your stand. And the Lord help you to do that in the name of Jesus. The Bible says as they begin to do it, the next thing that is going to be happening now is that there is going to be a quick accumulation of all the things the righteous people are doing. There is going to be a quick reckoning. That, hear the word the Bible says. The Bible says, uh, and those who fear the Lord talked with each other and the Lord listened. The Lord listened. The Lord didn't just listen, he heard. The word heard means he noted it. He didn't just observe it, he recorded it. Why? Because in this season, as God begins to move swiftly to bring to pass his eternal purpose, he's going to be looking for men and women that understand, that align, that sub subscribe to his mind and mindset and mandate and such people. He's going to be pouring grace upon them. He's going to be visiting them suddenly. He's going to be distinguishing them suddenly. He's going to be making them his jewels in these days. He's going to be decorating their lives suddenly. So the Lord is not just going to observe. He's going to take note. The chronicles will be open. The annals will be open. The records will be open. And in those records, God is going to watch how by reason of your righteousness, the things you avoided, the things you subscribed to, the things you connected with, the things you embraced and flowed with, the Bible says God will not only hear it, he will take note of it and on the basis and platform of those your operations, he's going to visit you suddenly. So here is what to do. This is the time to ask yourself, what are my records before God? If God is to open my annals, my, the chronicles of my life, what is going to be found? Is it going to be a deficit? Is it going to be a credit? Is it going to be well done, my beloved son, servant? Is God going to be able to look at you and say, this? So we're entering a new year. That for divine distinction to find full expression in your life, you've got to position yourself in such a way that your activities for God bears heaven's approval, bears heaven's record, bear heaven's recognition. These are the seasons God wants to listen, God wants to hear, God wants to note, God wants to, on the basis of that, connect with you. May that be your portion. May you be, oh, like. Everyone in the scripture that the book was open, the Mordecai and the many others, and it was found written, the acts that they have done, and heaven is suddenly sitting in judgment and say, what was the reward that was given to this man for this righteous deeds that were noted? And the same day, heaven passes a judgment and say, this man should begin to get reward in this season 2021, in this season of divine distinction. May God look at your record. May God look at your works. May God look at your consistency. May God send you a support. May heaven bless you. May the judgment of God distinguish you. May this season of divine distinction decorate your life. May God pull the record and see where it is written. Your sacrifice, your labor, your service, your consistency, your humility, all the things you have done. And if you have not been doing it, beloved, 2021 comes as a, an opportunity to reset, to recalibrate, to reorganize, to recommit, and rededicate yourself to building the kind of record that will guarantee you that kind of blessing that heaven is talking about. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Bible says, to support what I've said, a scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those people who feared the Lord and honored his name. A scroll of remembrance. A book of remembrance. If you understand the Bible, the purpose of God Noting things like that is so that it can become a basis for his connection. Oh, there's so much on this. If you study Nehemiah chapter 13, many times, three times to be precise, Nehemiah will say, for this, for the wood offering, at times appointed, for my sacrifice to the priest, for my labor, remember me, remember me. And the Bible says, and God in Genesis chapter 8 remembered Noah and caused the east wind to blow and assuage the flood. Ladies and gentlemen, what God is going to be noting is our acts and activities. It's our disposition and commitment to righteousness and righteous order. It's our support for kingdom order, kingdom values, and kingdom projects. In this season, God is going to be bringing to reckoning all that you have done and becoming a basis, a platform upon which the book of remembrance shall be called. I pray for you, my friend.
Those of you who have been laboring from 2021, get ready for your distinction. Yes, you that have been laboring. Yes, you that even look like, when will God remember me? I stand as a servant, hear the word of the Lord. This word is for you. Your season of remembrance is here. Your year of remembrance is here. Your year of distinction is here. The harvest of God shall overtake you. The blessings of God shall overtake you. Your book of remembrance shall be open. The Lord is saying for me to tell you, in 2021, the book shall be open. Your file shall be called up. The annals of your activities shall be called up. Judgment shall sit in heaven over what you have done. Listen, in this year of divine distinction that is coming, your promotion shall be announced. You shall move from the gate like Mordecai to become the most significant fellow. In the name of Jesus, can those that matter, the true whom God wants to bless you, shall call for you. In the coming year, a news is coming. A news of your sudden rise. A news of your recognition. A news of an announcement that you are no longer where you used to be. 2021 shall be your distinction year. Shall be your announcement year. Shall be your promotion year. No devil in hell. No Haman in the palace. No conspiracy of darkness. No wicked forces can stop it. I announce that shall be your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Get ready, saints. In 2021, the Lord is asking me to tell you that for divine distinction to take place, the books shall be opened. And here is the opportunity you have tonight. If you know that when the book is opened, get ready. Not tomorrow, right now. We have a few more minutes to cross over to 2021. Make up your mind, my father. 2021, I shall work hard to catch up. I've wasted time. I didn't understand what was at stake. But from this moment, I shall be the one you will count upon. I shall be in the forefront. I shall be in the vanguard. I will not let down. I will not back down. I will not cave in. I will not resign. I will not hold back. I choose to commit. I choose to redouble. I choose to connect. In the name of Jesus, may that be your testimony for 2021. In Jesus' name. I can tell you how many people as a pastor I sat in churches and hear people escape things by their whiskers. By their whiskers, literally speaking. People escaping death, judgment by his breath. People shouting in exasperation, only God could have saved me. I can't count how many of such testimonies I heard in this fading year. Ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be an intensification of the heart. Unfortunately, many shall be consumed. Unfortunately, many shall be subsumed under this attack and ravaging of hell. Unfortunately, I wish I can tell you here it will not happen. That will make me a false prophet, but I choose not to be. Many will be consumed, but I pray for you. By your heart and sacrifice, by your commitment and alliance to God. Has God make up his jewels? Has God break a distinction between those that serve and those that serve him now? You shall escape it. You shall triumph over it. Where people are casting, are, are saying there's a casting down. In 2021, in this new decade, your testimony shall be there is a lifting up. No plague will come now your dwelling. You shall be, only be able to hear what is happening out there. But you shall escape it. That shall be your portion. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. A scroll of remembrance was written. Concerning those who fear the Lord. They didn't just fear the Lord. The Bible says they honored his name. Everywhere the name of the Lord was mentioned. Their desire was to bring honor to God. To labor. To spend and be spent. For the sake of their honor. They were like David who said. The reproaches of them that reproached thee. Be, has fallen upon me because the zeal of your house. Psalm 69 verse 9. They were like David who are ready to give their all. Like Paul who are ready to spend and be spent for the sake of the gospel. They honor this name. They honor this name in character. They honor this name in integrity. This is the season where people who choose not to compromise and honor the name of the Lord like a Joseph. Who would say I will not do this wickedness against the Lord. It may look profitable. It may look like a temporary advantage. Nobody may hear about it. But I serve a God that I fear. I will not dishonor the name of our God. Listen, keep doing that, friend. Because your time of announcement is here. Glory to God. Your time of announcement is here. In the name of Jesus. 
Now here is the icing on the cake of God's prophetic word. The last two verses. The Bible says, on the day when I act, I can spend an hour on days. Listen, friends. The God we serve is a God of purpose. And every purpose has a time expression. Can I tell you, I speak as his mouthpiece tonight. We are living in the time of his acts. In a greater dimension. When the Bible says you shall again return and see. He's talking about the way it used to be in the acts of the apostles. Where in the church, the Ananias and the Sapphira were judged. Where they were, when the elements, the sorcerers, the pretenders to be righteous were judged and they went blind. When, when righteousness was celebrated, the Bible says we are returning now to the acts. That's what he's saying. On the day when I act, I'm sure you know that what we call the acts of the apostles is actually the acts of God through the Holy Ghost by the hand of the apostles. That's a proper title for that book. We are going back to the acts where there will be sudden, sudden. I'm sorry to announce, I, this is not the kind of thing I like to preach, but we are back to the day of sudden judgment, sudden death, sudden disappearance, sudden destruction, sudden wickedness, sudden collapse. Listen carefully. You are going to see empires collapse. You are going to see business scatter. You are going to see all kinds of associations disappear. You are going to hear death, strange deaths. Why? We are back in the days of the acts of God. I've told you God is in a hurry to bring distinction. And the only way that can happen is sudden promotion and sudden demotions. Is sudden you know, introduction and sudden disappearance. The days of the acts of God are here. The days of the acts of God are here. In 2021, get ready. It's going to be sudden. It's going to be swift. It's going to be comprehensive. It's going to be all around. Get ready. The acts of God are here. The acts that makes God to show up suddenly. Suddenly. And rewrite stories. And promote men. Who in secret has stood by the code of righteousness. The acts of God are here. Says the Lord Almighty. He says they will be my treasured possession. They will be my treasured possession. I will spare them. Why is God talking about sparing? Because it's a season of judgment. Why is God talking about sparing? Because it's a season of um, incredible pandemics. Get ready. They're coming. Yes, the pandemics are coming. It's a season where economies are collapsing. Businesses are disappearing. Listen to my voice. It's a season where the center cannot hold. Things are going to fall apart. It's a season where the best of economic predictions will be made nonsense of. It's a season where scientists will be puzzled, not knowing what to do. It's a season where the high and mighty will be dumbfounded and confounded and confused and know not what to do. Nothing to run to. Money can help. Doctors can help. Medicine can help. Everything is going to start failing. That's the season we are in. But hear the promise of the Lord. God says, I will spare my own. I prophesy upon you. By the force of righteousness, you shall be spared. You shall be exempted. I activate on your behalf for your righteous son the covenant of exemption. In the name of Jesus Christ, I activate over your destiny, over your family, the covenant of exemption. Heaven shall spare you. Heaven shall put it back upon you. In the name of Jesus, when the avenger, the destroyer, goes around taking lives destroyed in the air, on the land, on the sea, everywhere, I prophesy. Because of divine distinction, the season we are in, you shall be spared. You shall be spared. Your money is not good enough. Your influence is not good enough. Your, your connection is not good enough. The only thing that is good enough in this next decade is God. Only God can help you survive. He said, I am the one that we spare. Not medicine. Not anything. Why is God talking about sparing? The Bible says Satan is coming with great wrath, knowing that his days are short. As his days get shorter, Satan is panicking. He wants to send many more people to hell. So there's going to be all kinds of crazy things happening. Lord, have mercy. But in the midst of it, here's the beauty. In the midst of intense darkness, light shines better. 
in the midst of intense darkness, righteousness is exalted. As I begin to wrap up and get ready to usher us and pray into 2021, I want you to know that God is looking out for people that the book of remembrance will be written on their behalf. May you be one of them. He says, I will spare them just as a father has compassion and spares his son who serves him. His son who serves him. Men and brethren, if you have never understood the mystery, the miracle, the blessings, the honor of serving God, 2021, enroll yourself. Don't wait for any jack to discourage you. One of the keys to the exemption and distinction that God is bringing is righteousness followed by divine service. The two have to go together. These are not the times where you act like divine services for jobless people who have no business doing. Please forget it. He says, I'm going to separate those who serve him. Those who serve him. That talks about you being physically, mentally, socially, financially, spiritually engaged in kingdom advancement, kingdom project. These are the days. I, I, I make no pretenses. I, I, do not, I do not summarize it. I do not circumscribe the words. I am here to tell you. Those of you that have not been involved in divine service, go and enroll. Plug in. Find your, a niche for yourself. Do some. There is so much you can do for God. Listen, giving money is good, but it's not enough. It's part of it, but it's not enough. It's the days of service. There's so much to be done because as evil is increasing, God is going to be looking for more men and women who understand the times and are committed to his cause that he will release and activate and position and empower and anoint to be able to go on a rescue operation to draw many from, from unrighteousness to righteousness. So God is going to be looking for people who serve, who serve him, who understand that service is a ticket to escape what is coming upon the world. Who serve him. And he concludes by saying. And you will again. Why again? What does God mean by again? He means that there was a time. And it came to a, 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 it came to a head. In, at least in scriptural time. Let me not talk about contemporary churches. Let's stay with scriptures. It came to a head. In the days of the acts of the apostles. In the days of the acts of the apostles. So what the Bible is saying here. Like I said in the previous verse. On the day that he asked. Is that God is returning us back. He's returning us back to the days of the acts of the apostles. And you will again see the distinction. All through the Bible from the time of Egypt. When Israel were in Egypt but they were in Goshen. And there was a distinction between the Goshenites. People who dwelt in Goshen. Such that wherever the people of God were. Whether it's in Europe, America, Antarctica, Australia, Africa. Wherever you are. So long as you understand this covenant practice of righteousness and divine service. So long as you are connected and committed and consistent. So long as you know this and are doing it with sincerity. With a passion driven by a heart for God and his kingdom. It doesn't matter where you are. God is going to spare you. He said you will again, again. The days of the again, of, of the miracles, the separations, the distinctions, the announcements, the glory cloud is back again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The days where those who are Christians and those who are non-Christians are clear is back again. You again see the distinction between one, the righteous and the wicked. Two, between those who serve God and those who do not. Men and brethren, we have two minutes to enter the new year. Listen, I want you to rise wherever you are. I want you to get ready to make this declaration and confession. You will say with me, my father. Say with me, my father. In the name of Jesus, I come to you today. I've already repented and made peace with you. But I enter this new year on a note of confession and declaration. That from this moment, I shall be the one you shall count on in righteousness. I shall be the one you shall count on in divine service. My mind is made up. I want to be a participator. 
in divine distinction. I don't want to be a victim. I want to be one of those that will celebrate your goodness. Thank you for the privilege of being able to enter the new year on this note, oh God. And therefore, as I enter into 2021, my mind is made up. I declare to heaven, here am I, use me. Say it loud, here am I, use me. Say it loud, here am I, use me. Say it loud, here am I, use me. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we thank God for 2020 for 2020 but as we enter into 2021 i want you to get ready to make a loud noise to give a celebration because of your newfound dedication and commitment to divine service one two three four five six seven happy new year come on give the lord a shout give the lord a flourish Give the Lord a noise. Somebody get excited. Welcome to 2021. Your year of divine distinction. Say with me, my father. I am distinguished this year. This decade is my decay. Oh, yes, my father. I shall serve you in righteousness. When many are cast down, there shall be a lifting. Heaven shall count upon it. I rejoice, my father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Happy New Year to everybody. Yes, go ahead. Make that noise. Celebrate the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Wish that brother happy new year. Welcome to the year of divine distinction. Say to somebody beside you, the Lord is distinguishing you this year. The Lord is promoting you this year. The Lord is decorating you this year. As you side with God, come on, tell somebody, welcome. It's your year of distinction. Say to somebody, it's your year of announcement. Say to somebody, it's your year of promotion. Say to somebody, the Lord shall change your story. The Lord shall decorate your life. It's harvest time. It's promotion time. It's lifting time. Distinction coming. Oh, are you as excited as I am? Give the Lord some praise one more time. Celebrate the Lord. Make a joyful noise. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. Happy New Year. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year to all the pastors and leaders and members and workforce of World Assembly. Happy New Year to friends and family. Happy New Year to everybody participating in this online broadcast and have heard this message. Happy New Year. Congratulations. The God that made you to see the first day, you will see the end of this year. In the name of Jesus Christ, I prophesy upon you, whatever you lost in 2020, get ready. This year is restoration. This year is regathering. This year is recopying. In the name of Jesus Christ, as God make up his jewels, as God separate and distinguish between those that serve and those that serve him, you shall be remembered. I prophesy. It's your year of remembrance. What you have never been able to do before, get ready. You shall do it this year. You shall enter this year. You shall receive it this year. In the name of Jesus Christ, I prophesy. Get ready, get ready, get ready. In the name of Jesus Christ, men shall come to your rising. Men shall come to your brightness. Because of darkness that is around, your shining shall become more distinguished, shall become more pronounced. In the name of Jesus Christ, I hear the sound of heaven. I hear jubilation in my spirit. I hear an announcement in my spirit. God is announcing honor. God is announcing decoration. God is announcing placement. God is announcing distinction. God is announcing triumph over you. Receive your portion. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. This year you shall shine. This year you shall excel. This year you shall triumph. This year you shall make progress. You shall not be stagnated. Nothing shall hold you down. In the name of Jesus Christ. No force shall stand before you. Every gate of wickedness that arise against you today from this first day of January 2021, I condemn there. In the name of Jesus, can every evil that rises against you shall go down before you. Shall go down before you. In the name of Jesus, Christ, no conspiracy shall stop you. No association shall stop you. That which is in your hand shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, Christ, as you prosper God and his work, heaven shall prosper you. Heaven shall enlarge you. Heaven shall increase you. In the name of Jesus, this year, money shall be far from you. Regret shall be far from you. Peace shall be your portion. Grace shall be your portion. Favor shall be your portion. Help shall be your portion. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead, lift your two hands and receive it. Lift your two hands and receive it. Celebrate what God is doing and shall yet do. You will testify. I declare it a year of testimonies for you. 
a year of amazing results for you because of divine distinction sudden blessings sudden harvest sudden announcement sudden change Sunday increase. Receive it now. People you know no shall serve you. Nations you know no shall serve you. Doors shall be open for you. Locally and internationally. Your harvest shall come. Suddenly, your book of remembrance is open. I announce over your destiny. Receive it now. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. If you believe that's your portion, go ahead and give the Lord a cup of praise. Make some noise wherever you are at home in the car, in the office. Come on, celebrate the Lord. Give the Lord a joyful noise. Celebrate because you're on the winning side. You're on the side of righteousness. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. We have some profound announcement for you as we share the grace in a moment. But can we start the year by giving the Lord the best offering? Let it be your ignition offering for a year of glorious testimonies. Get the best offering you can. Make it a sacrifice. Make it a seed. Let it be a covenant seed you are starting the year with. The details of where to send the offering will be on the screen right now. I want you to get out your devices through which you send your monies and send your money to the, to the instructions on the screen. Let it be a sacrifice. Let it be a first seed to God. It's not a first fruit. There's going to be a day for first fruit offerings. But let it be your first, you know, seed to God in 2021. Get ready. I want to prophesy upon that offering as you prepare right now. Prepare for yourself. Prepare for your family. Prepare for your business. Prepare it as a basis. As God, you want God to be the first person you are giving to this year. The first person you are giving to this year. Let it be God. Father, thank you for every hearer and everyone who is motivated right now to sow a seed on this first day. To give an offering, to bring a seed as a way of opening the new year. I prophesy upon your seeds. As you start the year with giving to God, heaven shall give to you every day of this year. In the name of Jesus Christ, as you give to God, you shall not give to disease. You shall not give to trouble. In the name of Jesus Christ, I prophesy harvest for you. As you start with God, you will end with God. In the name of Jesus, as you start the year with giving, you will never be on the begging side. All through 2021, you shall be on the giving side. God will put seed in your hand. God will give you everything that you need. That you remain a giver all through 2021. In the name of Jesus, I, I prophesy that your business experience a quantum leap this year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Go ahead right now. Sow that seed. Don't delay. Give God his portion right now. Let God see that you are starting by honoring him with a seed, with an offering, and with a sacrifice. God bless you as you do that. Get ready, my friends. I can't wait to hear your testimonies. Listen, there is no massive testimony this year that will surprise me. You know why? The Lord already said it. Divine distinction. Get ready. Every, even your enemies shall hear of the goodness of God. Your friends and foes shall hear of the goodness. Your rising will be unstoppable. Listen to all the announcements, all the special meetings and programs, all the details of what is going to be happening in this glorious year of divine distinction shall be put on the screen right now. And the Lord bless you as you do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to the announcement and I'll be back to do a benediction. All right, I believe you've heard all the announcements. So much is going to be happening this year. I want you to plug in. Remember, it's a year of divine service. It's a year of committing to God. Start right, start early, start well. Don't be a slow person. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 4. The Bible says, he become a poor that dealeth with a slack hand. The days of slackness are over. Don't be a slacker. Enroll, participate, roll up your sleeves. Let heaven see so that heaven can distinguish you early enough. And I pray for you, you shall get early surprises. You shall get early miracles. The Lord shall satisfy you early in 2021 in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's take our declaration together. You see it on the screen for 2021. Wherever you are, let's declare together. One, two, go. God bless you. May the peace and the rest of the Lord be your portion as we receive your testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Enjoy your new year. God bless you.